Hey everybody, hope everything's going well. This is a long anticipated video on making a Discord music bot with slash commands and it has a queue that works so that you could queue up songs after what you're listening to finishes, it will play that. So without further ado, let's jump in. I've already made my bot in the developer application portal, discord.com developers applications. Um, if you haven't made the bot from my previous video, don't worry, just click create an application, name it, hit your checkbox and create. I'm going to show you the settings I used in my bot. Um, you can name it whatever, give it whatever picture. I thought this was a pretty cool little DJ. And now you don't have to worry about the installation tab. If you watched my previous video, the interface on this has changed quite a bit. So you'll still need to go to OAuth2 to, uh, to create your invite link, check bot, and then add the permission send messages. Um, we'll need it to be able to use slash commands, use embedded activities, connect, speak, and let it use external sounds and allow it to manage messages. Oh, and embed links as well. And that should be all you need. You'll want to copy this, enter it into your browser, and then allow it into your server. My bot is already in my server, so I'm not going to go through this. Um, you'll need to go to bot next and set the, not this, but you'll need to make it a public bot, ensure that this is checked. You don't need presence intent, but you do need server members intent and message content intent. So be sure to have these checked and it'll say you have unsaved changes. Like if I turn this off, you'll just want to hit save changes so that your changes are saved. And that should be all to do in this developer portal. So now we're in the code. If you haven't watched my previous video, I highly recommend you pause the video, open a new tab and go do that. Because in that video, we download a lot of essentials like if, if MPEG, we set up the uh, packages. And we essentially get a music bot running in the old fashioned way. So just get that done. It'll make this process a lot easier. I'm going to copy and paste the code from that previous tutorial. If you don't want to do that and you just want to kind of fumble through this, then go to the GitHub link. I'll include the old and the new. So go to the old one and copy paste the code into your new project. We're going to have a maniac PY and a main PY. Yeah, so I'll copy paste the main PY. Then Maniac PY, I'll copy paste just like so. And over here, we see all we've done in that previous tutorial. We set it up, plus the fix I added in a short video after it. Make sure this is FFmpeg Opus audio and not the other one. Make sure your options are all set as such. This will prevent any errors going forward uh, that have already been solved. So now we're going to have to add a few things. Uh, Qs is already here because I unintentionally left it inside the GitHub, but spoiler alert, we were adding queues. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually take away this on message command. Um, and that's gonna cause us a couple of warnings. This message no longer exists. And we're gonna shift tab this to bring it back and remove these if statements because we would no longer be using actual message intent to determine what command has been called. We're going to be using slash commands. So this client's gonna actually be different, but before we do that, we need to from discord.ext import commands. And this will allow us to use our prefix commands. So here where client is, we're gonna say discord actually commands bot client equals commands bot we're going to say command prefix equals we're going to prefix our commands with a period because despite these being slash commands you can set this to anything so now we can come down client event remains the same but instead of that client event on message we're going to use client command and give it a name we're going to say this is called play. Then we're going to say async death play and pass in two things, ctx and link. And you'll see we still get errors because I did a typo here, but we also get an error here. 
on message. We need to change this to CTX to allow that to be the context because we're no longer getting on message. We are reading from the context. So the message context that calls this has an author, which should be you. We're going to find the voice channel that you are sitting in and connect to it. Simple as. And here we're going to say CTX. Just change every message to CTX and your warnings will go away. And actually, we don't even need this little bit right here. So take away the URL. And this is no longer URL. It's going to be link. And down here in each other little bit, we're just going to change this to CTX and set up our command names. I'm going to skip forward in the video just a little bit to add these names because it's a little redundant. Okay, now that we have all of our name, all of our commands set up as rather than slash commands, our dot commands, we can actually start making our Q command. So I'm going to say client command name Q, then of course async def Q. It really doesn't matter what you name this, by the way. It's just going to be called whenever you say Q, but I like to keep it the same as the command name just for convention's sake. So now, first off, uh, let me explain what we're going to do with this Q command. We have to create the Q first, so we're going to be adding the Q to this dictionary with the key, probably our voice client. So our voice client uh, that we are currently using is going to be the key value for this Q. Actually, it's not going to be the voice client. It's going to be the voice client guild ID, which is the server it's in, so it can track, you know, Qs per server rather than per voice client. And we're going to add the link to the value of that Q object. If that doesn't make sense, then just tag along. You'll see what I mean. So we're going to say if CTX uh, guild ID not in not queues, but queues, then we're going to say queues CTX guild ID equals an empty array. Because we want this value to not just be one. We don't want a queue that can only say play this next song and nothing else. We want a queue that can stack up. You know, you could stack like 40 songs in the queue. We're going to take this URL that we pass in and say queues, actually, CTX guild ID append URL. Now that adds the URL to our queues internal array for this server. Then we're just going to give a response to the user. So CTX sends added to queue. That is our queue command. That's all that's going to do. Now what we have to do now is add the function to the play command that actually plays the next song in the queue. Because right now we're not doing that. We're connecting to the voice client, uh, creating our song inner workings, basically, just to play the song. Then we're playing it, right? And nothing happens after. Uh, so what we need to do is create a command that is not going to be called by any Discord command. So we could just say play next, pass in the context, despite not using it as a command. Now we're gonna sit now we're gonna check to see. If queues at the context guild ID is not empty, so if it's not an empty array, then that means there's something in it. So we're going to make this link queues. I keep really jarring the spelling of queues, but we're going to pop the first item of the array. Now, what is pop? Pop takes the index, so in this case, the first item of our array, zero, and removes it and puts it in a variable. And then once it's removed, this no longer holds the item that this held. So say we have a song say we have three songs light up in our queue right pop will take the first song in the queue take it out and put it in link and now queues no longer has that queues has two songs now then we're going to say await play with ctx and the link it's that simple it's that simple and since we're not actually Running this as a command, we do have to pass in the context, which is why play next gets a context. Now, how are we going to call play next? We're actually going to take advantage of a override method of this play function. Uh, there is a special after function you could call to play after this song is done play. This is a little complicated, so bear with me here. I'm going to say lambda async io run 
coroutine thread save, play next, pass in the context, and then say client loop. Close all parentheses, and now I'll explain this. So a lambda function is actually just a function that's so short and used only once that you don't have to define it somewhere else. Like we couldn't do play next as a lambda because it's three lines. This lambda function is only used once in the code is really short. It's a one liner. So we can actually just define it here instead of making another function. That's all the lambda is. And E is a required parameter, but we're not using it. So async IO run coroutine thread safe. So see here, it says submit a coroutine object to the given event loop. Essentially it runs this asynchronous, which is required for the play next. We run play next, pass in the context that we get from play. And then client loop is our second parameter, which is required. It's just a loop and the client is already in a loop. So we're good to go there. You'll have to pardon all these cuts in the video because I am sick and I'm currently coughing a lot as I record this and I figured that an uncut video with me coughing is less than ideal for you guys so bear with me here. So this should run. I'm gonna open my discord. Okay so now we can actually test the bot. I'm gonna run this boy. We can see in the terminal he is up and going and now at my server he appears online so i'm going to pop into general you should be able to hear me here i don't know exactly what you can hear at this point hopefully you'll be able to hear the song so i'm going to say play uh this uh, he pops in i can hear him <laughs> then i'm going to play this, Q. this next First I got your brother. audio now is going to add it to cube Skibbity, my friend hopefully you can hear this And now he plays this next song. This queue is good. So we can just stack things in the queue by saying queue. And we can override what's currently playing with dot play. And all the other commands currently work as well. So we'll say stop. And he'll leave. Now, we will get an error if we say we try to play it again. Oops, I mean, let me hop in here. Let's play. Bop. Right, wife. Maybe we won't. Life good. But just for safety, we're going to come in here and we're going to add a line here to where we delete the voice client's CTX guild ID. So that every time we play and we create a new voice client, it won't just keep stacking because this will cause us issues way down the line if we just keep hitting play and running that as it stands. But now we have another issue that we need to address, and that is clearing the queue. Say we have a queue of 50 songs and we want to hear the 27th song. Well, we're going to have to wait 26 songs or audios until we get there. So how do we clear the queue? This is pretty simple. Uh, of course, I'm going to make quiet commands, name, clear queue, async def clear queue context we don't really pass in anything to this so this is really simple we're just going to check the ctx guild id in queues if i can spell queues right there we are if the guild id is in queues i'm going to take queues ctx guild id and clear it and then say to the user await ctx send this sends a message you clear. Oh, and we might want to stop running so this code change can actually apply. Else, else we'll say await CTX in. There is no you to clear. Now, this is this is one of the reasons we use a queues directed by the guild ID and voice clients directed by the guild ID. Because we don't want this command to clear queues in all servers, obviously. So just this this simple thing that we're using really saves us from having a mass chaos robot. So now that we have all this functionality, we should have a functioning queues music bot using slash commands. 
hello, we have an error. Uh, I was really hoping we would have an error. And the error is actually client command. I said commands, of course. That's just a typo. I was hoping it would be a more significant error. But, hey, that's good. If it works the first time, that's okay. It's a little scary, but it's okay. So here, hop into general. We're going to play the same two. But this time, cue right, this wife. up Life. and play the second one. Wife fight back. Kill now we're going to say clear you. You cleared. It shouldn't play the Think next song. Wife. But these are not songs, by the way. These are audios. Regret. No next song. Boom. Q cleared. So now we can stop bot to believe and hop out. And that is all there is for this tutorial. I hope that through my sickness I was able to explain this well. Uh, fever's got my brain acting a little weird. But yeah, um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any errors, leave them in the comments. Uh, the last video, everybody kept running into the same error, so I made a mini video that helped a lot of them through that error. So if you have any errors, let me know. Uh, I'll help you with one-offs in the comments, just uh, however you want to work that. This has been a long-anticipated video. I hope it satisfies and helps you all make the bots that you want. Um, using slash commands is really the modern way to approach bots. Uh, you can use the old method I used, and as a challenge, if you want to keep using that, make that bot with um, a Q, like I've shown you here. I've just found that Qs are a lot easier using the ext or extension commands with prefix commands. If you did follow along with the old video and you're running into an issue where the player plays the next song in the queue before the song is over, then you're going to need to make sure this is FFmpeg Opus Audio and set these options identically. If you want to copy paste this code, I've linked it in the description. And I'm excited to keep on making more Discord bot videos. If you found this helpful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, as this really helps the channel. And if you want to see more Discord content like this, definitely like and comment because uh, that just helps things move along. Uh, until next time, guys, keep on coding.